It's too good. Because I, 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 I had to rip all my hair out to get it out.
dollar eight hundred number and not back it. It makes it easier for anyone to have stop. Does it automatically enroll everybody at no. the anniversary date then? Yeah. Okay. So then it does become a choice because one of the big choices with the opt out is that it's not been choice. The federal send this in, they automatically get re enrolled. Now they're going to have to fill out a piece of paper for the gas and send it in to opt in. Is that correct? If we're an opt in, opt in. If we're an opt in community. No, no, they would, they would call our 800 number. No, I know, but they would have to take a step to enroll with you. They would yes, automatically yeah. be enrolled like the electric is right now. They correct. Would their sheet. Correct, yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out, though, is um, you see your available balance for your grant. Uh, right now, you're at 23.9 in that middle part under the uh, Energized Community Grant. Um, last year, because we put everyone back on a local utility, you guys remember when that happened? Uh, you still had money from that year. It just hasn't been applied yet. So you actually have an additional uh, $14,975 coming for the um, available balance. That'll be October 1st of that. 23 plus the 14. Correct. Correct. Now, is this all how much can I spend of that in 23? And how much can I carry forward to 24? Uh, so that'll be uh, for the October 1st, that'll be two years you can use it. Uh, you'll have it. You can spend it all, or you can hold on to it. I just didn't know if the 10 one had a deadline of getting rid of the 14,000. No, 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 no. That's when it's going to be applied to the 23. Okay, but then I have two years to do something with that 14. Correct. And this is all energy-related projects? Yep. Windows, lights, uh, HVAC, all the, the typical things that people use for. Okay. Um, it looks like you guys got your uh, sponsorship money squared away. Ooh, great chili cook off. I'll see you guys October 7th. <laughs> um, as far as that goes, that's about it for me. Um, Nick, I'm going to be needed. I was not able to make the last uh, Orange County Township Association uh, dinner, mm -hmm. which was a shame because I was at Mickey's as our board member, but that was also my seven year old's birthday party. So, Mickey Marazzi, good guy, but you know, I'm more afraid of my seven year old than him. Can't live with that seven year old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any questions you guys have? Any yeah. All right. Yes. Yes. So when are I signed the web I had one contract with the Okay. Something. Okay. I just had this next two yesterday. A letter in mail. No pack saying that I would automatically be switched to no pack beginning next month. Did you um, sign a contract with ADP? Yeah, yeah. Okay, then that shouldn't have, that might have been a mistake. Right. Um, if you could send, would you be able to send it to You can even take a picture with your phone and email it to me if you can. Okay. Um, I'm sure that was a mistake. If, if anyone who signed a um, contract or whatnot would not be involved in that. They do not. So what's your contract? Uh, we're 6 4 for our standard. Okay. 6 8 for our. Uh, Two year fixed rate and six eight seven five for the twelve month group. Okay. Yeah, I tell people all the time, like, hey, find a better rate elsewhere. And they go with that, like, go with that. You know, we're, we're never like gonna tell people and say, okay, you can find a lower rate. I mean, if you can find something better, go for it. Um, we did just sign up for our first Franklin County community outside of Columbus because the AEP rates down there, I think they're like 12 3 for a while. So, well, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Yeah, for the update. Good fun conversation. Thank you. Thank you. How'd the fishing go? Good. Good. All right. Well, you guys have my uh, contact information on the sheet. So, if you need anything, feel free to call. Yeah. Next time to see you, we'll have a one stash on. Thanks, Jim. Have a good one. Everyone. Yes. So he was he's under there. It's actually not highlighted, but it's um, historic structures, comprehensive land use plan uh, for departments. Todd Pete's is planning on attending trustee meeting today. To give updates. So you want him under 
he could do it. Or do we just he, he could do it now on a meeting guest, so we're not holding him up if that's okay. I was just asked to come out and talk about the private solution. Let's, why don't we get to that? Let's go ahead and now we're going to send you. Okay, let's do it. I'll be very brief. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it brief. Well, I go really fast. You said, listen. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so the first one is the public side of the lane. That was a $10,000 contract. To date, where we uh, still have over almost just under 8,000 bucks, we only got through 20% of that. We have all your maps updated. We have the write ups updated where we could. A big, a big reason for the update was when we did your plan in 2019, 2020, we had to use 2010 census data. So the new census was 2020, and then the data came out on May 25th, which is less than a week ago, for townships. We got for the county wide states and not which township. So we've already started adding the data into the land plan. Um, we still have some to-do items, and you guys are going to be involved. But actually, the room pretty much going to be involved with this. Um, so we, we were in this survey, the same survey we did the last time. So we had apples to apples responses. They are not apples to bananas in these surveys. Uh, we just have a, a department head meeting with trustees to go over the whole objectives and strategies. And we set some priorities and things like that. I just want to see, to see where we're at. I don't work closely enough with all the departments, of course, and I just need to find out what they've achieved and what they haven't. In the last three or four years, what's changed? What do we need to add to it? Because when we did this in 2019, we didn't have COVID. So things like that cause unusual problems. So we want to do that. We want to update any, you know, basically if you've completed them too, the one thing we talked about four years ago was to celebrate those successes. You know, whatever we were successful in doing, we need to let people know we were successful. Um, and then I, we need to update the tools, objectives, and strategies based on those meetings because we're going to ask to set new priorities and maybe new things. And then we update the interactive map, and we should be done. It's, you know, the good news is we hired a planner. He starts next week. So there's not two of us doing all this work. There's somebody else. Any questions on the landing plan and under the structures? Okay. So this, this to our structures, we were doing fantastic. We were almost done with it in a March meeting in front of the zoning commission. And then our, that, that was the last time I saw her. <laughs> she developed some serious health problems. She had migraines that didn't stop. And, you know, so anyways, long story short, she didn't work for us another day. And so um, we do have four interns starting um, next week as well. Um, partially, partially to finish up a uh, field, we have an intern named Nathaniel. Oh gosh, what an intern or something. He's a, he's a local, he's from Brimfield. He um, he's worked with Kelsey Moss uh, pretty extensively. So I'm glad to have him on board. And he'll be working on uh, helping wrap up the project with some minor data points to collect. We were talking about doing a uh, start structure surveys, and I'm debating in my head if I want to, rather than in, in try to do two surveys to the community at once, want to maybe merge the two and have a shorter number of questions. Uh, yeah, a shorter number of structure questions, but do those at the same time rather than bombarding the surveys. We did, we have pulled several historic uh, districts to help create a historic district. We also have, um, we've, we've kind of identified, um, not only I was hoping to have it, exactly, but we, there's, this information is on our website. You go to our website, you special projects, you can go to three and four structures, and you'll see that there. Um, we also talked about, I talked about the Kelso House and a few other, but quote unquote, ghost buildings. Those are buildings that are, were once, you know, here and are gone and people miss them. And then also, we talked about uh, including schoolhouses, which is Kelso House. There should be plenty of, you know, there's, as far as the budget goes, we have $13,000 in budget still. So there should be plenty of money to complete all these tasks. Is so, it then once you get everything done, then, I mean, the whole package will be put on our website. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's where it belongs. We're, we're switching over the websites. So we talked to Joe. We're in the process, but it's uh, what, five or six months. So, so yes. Be, end of November, end of November <coughs> beginning of December, we'll have a new site. It's a new it's a, it's a, uh, website that a lot of cities use. So I think it'll make it a lot easier for us. Right. So we use, yes, yeah, so we have our own website probably permanently, but obviously, when it's your church, you, you get it as well. Um, we do have those, those recreational maps, I should say. And some people took those recreation maps on their, on their home page, and some people didn't predict that those are really great as well. And we already did them in the 3D. Recreational maps from your parks and stuff? Yeah. 
Are you seeing any of this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it needs to be updated. It's four years old, but it's pretty cool. It also promotes private businesses too, not just the public parks. So that's, you know, here are businesses that are recreation related. The only other thing I want to play is, is the, even though we didn't come out and do with the bridge of structures, we, we used it and used that in our Venice historic structures and sold it to uh, Kent, uh, City of Kent Historic Historical Societies. And that's why we have the interns, is because they're all coming in to work on the Kent project, which is over 200 historic buildings. Yeah. Well, we need to get the flip the flow. But I think one of the most important things right now is to place, figure out a time that's good for everyone to have it. And get that scheduled so we know we're keeping forward on that project. I just want, well, since you're here, I just want to ask you about Sully's. Yeah. Sully's is one of the oldest bars that we've had in Brentville for, I don't know, I couldn't find a date or an era, but I know it's been here forever and ever. And in the, in the future, uh, it'll be coming down. Okay. So I didn't know if you wanted to. Do some things while it's still standing there. Maybe take a picture yes. of it. And, and, and that, that important? <coughs> yeah, that's one next to the police department. And then that little, uh, you know, that little building was one of the first restaurants. The, the, yeah, that's what. Is that blue or gray? I think it's gray. I think it's gray. I think it's got a lot of things. I think it's, someone told me it was a garage. The garage got tore down. It was Ron's garage, which was right on the corner where they expanded the, the lane. That got tore down. Okay. So you yeah, got both of those are sort of historical. Okay. So, uh, I'll make sure they take pictures. They, you know, we've been drafting all the national registers as well as the obvious uh, records. So we'll take pictures of those. And, you know, and I'm not trying to hold up the meeting, but in Greenfield, in Streetsboro, they had the bicentennial. And you know, I try to sell UFO shirts, and we won't talk about that right now. But <laughs> I got a picture of a name. But that's okay. Um, uh, but they had a hard time selling t shirts for 12 bucks, right? I go to the Streetsboro and they put all several of the old historic you know places that people go a lot of as, as kids, they had a street shop and they had a couple restaurants on there. And those t-shirts were selling for $27, $37 a piece. You know, the 37 was like a, a sweatshirt. But they, they were snapping those things up. I couldn't believe it. So just something to think about. They did a really right. cool, they did a really cool thing in Streetsboro. They also made playing cars of the of the, of the city. With old historic figures and homes and events, I guess, on there. And so that's part of the playing card. So it's just something else. And people bought those up too, like there's no more. Yeah. Or, I mean, because uh, you, you said they hired the interns for Cat, but they're going to get ours now. Yeah, they're ours. Right? So we, we have a set in time. And the fan goes by fan. I'm not sure. I hope you guys read. Maybe you don't know. He's young. He's just, he's like this junior year of college. And he's very, really interested, uh, interesting and interested. We also have an architecture student on the team, and then we have two more historic historians. Um, so I think we got a, a pretty well rounded group. All of them are like, uh, you know, dean's list and president's list, so they're all doing the public. So yeah, so I brought them, I brought two, I really brought in two to help with this project, but I'm going to flip one over to GIS later because there's a GIS person on our team now too. So I'm um, going to those over to another project. So that you guys, well, I already told you, it's hourly, not to exceed. So you're not going to worry about that. Yeah, just tell them where the building is first with the health that can't after us. Oh, no, you're your father. You're much farther down the road. And I'll help the other, help the other learn what the group is already completed as to what they need to do in Canada. That's great. Right. Yeah. And that's great for the history. I mean, it's all for you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the whole part of the just let me know on the date that you guys know all this is for us. That's a big guy. That old hotel that's down. And they say, wait for us on the stadium. I think we're kind of in the crickets over in the off of, off of that Deerfield Circle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw I heard Pentagonia that said that they're starting to renovate that. I heard that, yeah. They're looking for money for the renovation. I think, I think he's in there doing something, I thought. I guess uh, it used to be a stage coach shop or something. Yeah, they had another brick house in the circle, and that's gone. Mm -hmm. Which is what you got. I don't know if I told you just I want to keep it, but you know that uh, structure we had in the, our cemetery? Mm -hmm. That was our old, uh, that was where they used to put the, the buggies for the school, the school buggies. Mm -hmm. And I used to pick up the kids on that. Uh, and they take them to the horse drawn. But I guess what Jake told me was, 
We went through the net go down the dirt roads, but in the middle of the roads, I guess they had grass and some of them, so you'd have to watch for the cows because farmers just put their cattle off and graze them. Right. So, yeah. I mean, a different time, right? And chickens, I tell you, it's probably good. You can spend a, a half an hour, an hour with them, he can give so much of that. Well, I did spend some time with Chip and Chick earlier this year. I needed to get back with him. Um, but he further progressed on this. But he was, yeah, he was, you know, he was very interesting. Oh, he has you know, so much of the history. And a lot of these people that know the history are all the past. Yeah. So, well, thanks for coming, Matt. Well, thank you, Mike. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Dad. Take care. Okay. Let's. Yeah, from the 20 or the 17. Yes. And here's the sign. I make a motion to accept the minutes. 517, a second. I'll second that. Any questions on them? All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Can you make a motion on the approval? Yes. Yes. I mean, yes. 17. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve the other meetings. Regular meeting on uh, May 17. That was the regular one that was. We had a public hearing. We had a public hearing for us. So. Which one did you make a motion on? The regular meeting. No, I hadn't made a motion on that. Okay, okay. I'm going to make a motion that we approve the public hearing. May 17th. I'll second. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Okay. Agenda. Do we have any additions, reactions? I'll make a motion to accept it and then we can discuss. Okay, I'll second for discussion. Anybody? Yeah, I thought John had some idea. Um, I have, uh, under the fiscal office, I need uh, an ARP resolution for the cemetery. A what resolution? An ARP. ARP. Okay. American okay. National Plan. Um, for cemetery charges that we have to discuss. Um, and then there's an a, a executive session for number one. Um, I guess that we're going to have to view this as investigation of charges and complaints in that category. What's the board This will be B. That is for the, the executive section for B. There's already one out there for the police. Um, this is, I guess, the one that we're going to have to check is investigation of charges or complaints, which is in category one. That's the last one on the bottom. John, are we doing an executive session for filling the position for business manager, or are we still holding on? No, unfortunately, we're going to have to pass on that again um, okay. today. Um, there were some questions that Roy had, but then Roy is, I don't know if he told you, he's having eye issues again, and he's in South Carolina, and he might have to have surgery in South Carolina for his eye. So we're just going it again. Okay. Yep. And then, is there? All right. I think we should cover enough. I thought we had a third. Okay. I thought we had a third executive session. You need a third? No. Did you from the letter from Holly on the HR stuff? Well, is that the uh... for hours? Oh, yes, we do. Sorry, there is a third. Um, I apologize. I was just thinking of something else. Um, it is going to be. Um, no, it'll be all under executive session, Mike. So it'll be one, two, three. One, two, three. Do you see them right yeah. there? Because there was one for BPD, and then we just added two. Yeah, um, one, two, three. Well, three added. We're adding a third one right now. Yeah, but didn't you want the ARP? No, the ARP is just a resolution under fiscal. Yeah, that one's not exactly so that's okay. Yeah. So that ARP should be fiscal yeah. to C is in Charles. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, <coughs> in regards to the third one, I think we're uh, it's going to be one, and then uh, compensation of a public employee. Okay. So we'll have three total. One for Brendan Tashima Boy. Two would be investigation of charges and complaints. And three would be compensation of an employer. Yeah. 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 And then the only other question, John, um, did we ever get that bid packet for the library? No. Are we supposed to submit for today? No, I did not. And I mentioned that earlier to Mike, I was just having my friend. I okay. talked to Charles yesterday. He actually he answered the phone. Uh, he said he just had to dot some more eyes. Uh, I was just hoping to get it out a bit yeah, sooner than later because we're just so deep in the construction season now. Yeah. Well, I was told that I was going to have it by Friday. I didn't receive it. I was told I was going to have it by Wednesday, two months ago. Well, well, whatever it's worth, he did say he was caught up now. So. All right. All right, we have a motion on the floor for adding the under fiscal office ARP resolution for the cemetery to executive sessions. Um, all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Nick? Yes. Sue? Yes. Motion passed. Sorry, Sue. Yeah. Okay. Purchase orders. Any motion for the purchase orders? Still moved. Second. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Uh, motion for the warrants that we do to sign them. Sorry. I'll second. Quick discussion on this. Um, just one. John, that check for Aaron from the last one, I did not see any checking up for us to sign. Just remember to add the sales tax. We were supposed to take the sales tax out. I didn't see it in your final hand. I wasn't here this week or last okay. week. Okay. I just didn't see him to sign this week. So I. She needs to pay us that back, and I'm not sure if Kirsten had her pay us back and then receive it in. I'm not sure. I believe oh. she did. I think she did pay it okay. back. But. Okay, so we just issued the check and we just had her pay. Correct, and then she received it. I thought that's what she was going to do, but I didn't have a chance to talk to her about it. But okay. It should be resolved. Thank you. Roll call. All right. oh. those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, well, if you're a chance, you want to talk about it? Sure. Um, lighting district. Uh, I noticed that the uh, fire department is considered to be inside the uh, lighting district. All the outside lights went up as LED. So does that drop it out of the lighting district, or is uh, uh, Ohio is just not paying? Well, we don't have a lighting district at the town of Green there where the fire department habit is. It, uh, the developments are the ones that we have the lighting districts in in order to pay. Any of the other ones that are community ones, like at an intersection of a township road, are under the general liability of the township. And we, there's two sets of bills that we get for those. So I'm assuming that all the lights that we had there before are under that bill, and I'm assuming that the new ones that we have are just going to roll under that bill as well. There isn't a, we couldn't charge ourselves anyway. Um, an assessment. Okay. But, yeah. So Edison uh, won't be servicing those lights, um, and you don't get the rate that you, not to say that they're feeder rate, but it's not. So the whole town center area has pockets that aren't under one. Well, are you talking lights on the building, or are we talking poles that are out there? Poles. The poles they should file the tip or the um, ESIP program. I don't know. That's a quick. I don't create if they were filing that about no the poles, but because if they don't file the ESIP program, Ohio Edison will not fix those. Right. The poles that are going throughout the township will have ESIP selections. But the ESIP won't cover uh, other people. Well, I don't know. I don't know if that was the. I, I know that they won't. Oh, okay. They're fixtures. Uh, I didn't know if they had. Yeah. Uh, lights I, I asked that specifically for uh, the zoning as we go through for uh, the street lighting. Okay. Um, because it's my belief that we need to 
can't get over that probably and get rid of the uh, uh, all the papers that are out there now like in uh, trust and there's another the program out there that First Energy has that does cover LED lighting, uh, similar to ESIP. Okay. Uh, also, ESIP may uh, uh, may go away <coughs> under the uh, next uh, uh, PUCL grant, because it's a program that's been in place for 40 years, and, uh, and they realize it's obsolete uh, uh, for uh, multi-vehicle ramps. Sure. Do you have information on the other option that's out there? That um, I I can't get it. Uh, I've just been uh, uh, I haven't made that phone call yet, just because it's tying into uh, uh, what we're doing. The time. Well, when you yeah, do it with Zona District, to ask. Just uh, give it to Mike when you get yeah, it, so I can have it. We'll, yeah, we'll I didn't know there was a second program that was being. Yeah, I didn't that. either. Call and ask. I can't see. I mean, a lot of new places come in. You know, they don't want to go with LED. Why would you not? <coughs> I mean, you know, the Ohio is in the uh, business to sell electricity, and they don't necessarily want to uh, uh, you help know, okay, take a five hundred dollar bill down to a hundred. Right. So, I mean, no, I'm just trying to get their service anyway from the business owner. I mean, it's a pain. You got to like go out your way. Good morning. I have nothing. So there's no no old business and the only new business you've already covered the executive session for uh, appointment of personnel. I looked yesterday and I've got nothing to report. <coughs> Other than what um, I only thing I will bring up is we're keeping an eye on McGuire Park and Roby Road. Thank you. I mean, I we log it, uh, but you know, maybe once a shift, if that, it's getting checked and it's just, it's secluded. So the people riding four wheelers, if they get in there, we're never going to catch them. Um, not allowed to do that. <laughs> So did we ever find out, Cassie, that it was that lock, or Joe, did you see if that lock was left open on that gate, or if they busted it open, or, I mean? I think it was left open. The, the lock seems like it's fine, so. Okay, I just didn't know whether we were going to go back and look at the camera footage. Uh, we don't have a camera on the gate. Um, my intention is to install a camera further down the road on that first phone pole. Okay. Um, We'll can they down. squeeze in the side around the gate on the four wheelers anyway? <sighs> on a dirt bike, you can. Yeah. On a regular bicycle, but. I mean, let's be honest. We probably just avoided getting a gate damaged or a lock damaged. Mm -hmm. So it was unlocked, so they were able to just open the gate and go in. Well, but if they, <laughs> when it is locked, they will probably break the lock or damage it. But if the they gate. damaged it to get in and now they get an accident back there, it's not our liability because they broke into our property versus it being wide open and they went the road on it. I don't think it's our liability either way because it's. No. The gates closed. Do we have signs up. This is the big thing: is do we have signs around the property? Yeah, we gate. do. We do have some. We need more around the perimeter because there's besides the gate, there's multiple ways to get into the park. You can come in through the condos and go over the curb. You can come in through Talmadge Hills. I'm sure there's other footpaths that I'm not aware of. So, I'm just glad to see a cop car back there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's harder for us because all those areas to get in, we can't. So we got to go into Talmadge, come off Washburn, and go down Ruby Road to, to get there. I mean, granted, could you park behind Coles and and walk in, but you're not going to chase a four wheeler up. Well, you could be the way he gets in. <laughs> get that drone, just fly your drone over every day. Well, we could fly them and follow them home because you don't know where they're coming from. I mean, there was no signs of a truck and trailer from that day, so they're got to be local. So they're riding up from somewhere and. And I don't know if they're going down Roby Road to get in. Once the camera's there, we might know. But it's not like they have license plates or anything. Are any of the dirt bikes that were out there? Because yesterday I saw right in front of all that, two kids go by on their motorcycle or their dirt bikes doing wheelies through the whole intersection, right in front of everything. <laughs> Wait for it to flip and fall on the ground. Down there? Down no, in I'm right on 18 in front of Maple Crest and all that, just doing 
wheelies right down the street going probably 40 miles an hour in wheelies. Well, Through traffic, all kinds of you stuff. You watch the news in Cleveland, that's a real, real big problem right now. And there's, what, what, what can you do? Yeah. I kind of see things in spots everywhere. You just wave and <clears throat> hopefully they don't hit anybody or get hit. We'll have to have a spaghetti dinner for them when they get hit. Injured out there. How did uh, the air graduation go? I wasn't there, but uh, Chief did attend, and I heard it went off without a lot of hitch. Yeah, I talked to Nathan, and he said it went really good. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah. Good, great. Right. Okay, uh, you can see the calls for service there. Um, on the past two weeks' events, uh, we did complete first grade uh, show and tell it. Uh, with fire permit vehicles at the elementary on the 26th. That went really well. Um, we attended the Memorial Day event, which was very nice. Again, Rochelle did a good job putting that together. Uh, nice flyover uh, that we had that morning. Yeah. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, new prospect firefighters have been riding with the fire department. Um, I have a goal of a July hire date on the three that we're looking at. Um, I did have discussion with one yesterday. Um, we're going to speed up that process as fast as we can because uh, one of the candidates had said to me, you know, being nice about it, but like, we need to know because we got to sign up for college. So I do need to make sure that I'm giving them a fair, I can't make them wait, wait till August or September. Um, so, so we will speed up that process a little bit. As, as to date, I have... 12 right now and they're still coming in which is more than we've had through the last test so it, it, it is working i've had some really nice candidates walk through the door so far so you got 12 then? yeah that's great and more coming i'm actually probably going to have to cut it off because i need to catch up with the 12 i already have so it, it is uh going well you know the fire chief in cat all day you heard that what was going on? Yeah. Well, I went to three schools. From there, it's went by word of mouth because I've had kids from CDCA, Talmadge, um, a Mogador kid. It's it's spreading around. Someone from a gym found yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. All, the, all, all the chiefs get together. Of course, you know, mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, they were all talking about it. So. Yep. Yep. So so far so good. We'll we'll see how it goes, but. Uh, very excited about what's walked through the door. That's good. Um, on the station build, uh, you can see they're doing a lot of the freeze board and the soft fit right now. Um, electrical paint sprinkler plans are getting uh, finished and installed. They're being close to being settled on. What they finally decided was that they would just focus on the fire department side instead of the whole project, which I don't know why they didn't do it from the beginning, but that, that sped things up. Um, so they're working on that. I did find out that our architect is going to be gone for the month of June. That's what I was just going to say. So. Yeah, so, John, I think as the board, we need to have a discussion whether we meet with USDA or have a board discussion on is it time to sit down with Rikon and Moody and say. Well, June 28th is going to come and go real quick. I'm just about letting you be here for the next month. I know. And Jay's not going to do anything because he probably doesn't know what so on, again, they're they're moving on stuff, but do you guys? I will, I will throw it out to you guys. Do you guys want to meet and have a discussion of where it's at? I know Sue and I are there all the time, but I, I think we should to get it beat down and maybe have the USDA put a little whooping on on some people because okay. it goes back and forth between Rikon and Moody of who's delaying and who's not delaying, and now we might be going for a month. Yep. We're supposed to be done by the twenty eighth of June. Was that the final official signed off date? Because oh, that was the last. If the last meeting, that, that was the last proposed, but we don't have a signature that we agreed to anything at this point. No, there's, so, there's nothing out there. With, with I think that's where we need to bring in USDA, Rikon, and Moody all in the room with the board and have a session to say, all right, let's, we, we need to get everybody on the same page because Rikon's just going to keep pushing us off at this point because we're the least board in their side because they just play the Moody card all the time. Well, this is a little bit card this time. I mean, when he'll play, but he can't get a hold of Al. That's right. what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but yeah, their last tentative completion date, which was probably a month ago, was the 28th of, of June. Which well, but I think in the, in the scope of things, too, here's the other issue. We, 
That's the fire department completion date. The project completion date is the most important one. That's where the fire is. is what they were putting out every time we see that. Yeah, but I think we need to have that discussion and start talking about what that's going to look like. Because they're going to get some extension, most likely, based on the weather days that they got. But we as the board need to be updated on that. So I think they need to come oh, and you know, sit and before us. That's what I'm saying. I think they just need to come sit before oh, the public. Coming coming yeah. <laughs> Again, they're working, everything's going, but they're way behind. So if you guys want an update. Well, they're going to, I mean, they're going to play down the supply chain. Yeah. I mean, uh, I know, this is just going to be. Well, if you have a meeting, next trustee meeting, Bob's not going to be here. Should Bob not be here for a month? But my it's okay, opinion, but Moody can send somebody else. John, my opinion is we should have that in a couple of days, have that meeting with the USDA and pass what they're, what they Without would Without them. They're the, they're the loan. So did, are they concerned or they don't care? I think We're going to have it without anybody, like, just money. Like, yeah, you guys need to talk to USDA yes. and bring it back to us. We're gonna That's what I would do. Right. I'll email him right now to see if we can get on his schedule. Okay. okay, so. Yeah, the roof does look better. Yeah, it does look better. Um, I just yeah. it works. I don't, I'm not putting Dave on this, but Dave knows roofs more than anybody, so maybe the heat is settling the asphalt shingles because it does look like they're laying down a little bit more. Yeah, you want you got to have heat to so, seal them. So I believe that it does look better, and they did fix a bunch of spots. And we grew back the winter. Well, yeah, right. Right. Okay, and then I need a couple of board approval items. Uh, about a year ago, we discussed the fireworks that were going off on at Sunny Hills. Um, we reached back out to them because they're starting to kick up again for the wedding season. And I know we discussed it, but I don't ever think we put a fee structure in place. Uh, I would like to go with the fireworks company. The fireworks company will charge the individual the amount, and then they will send a check back to the township. Um, that's going to be the easiest way. So I'm, I'm picking a name. I don't know if they always do it, but American Fireworks would then charge the individual $400 for our time and labor and then send it back to the township. Was that a bill that you're sending to them? Again, it would be billed through American Fireworks part of the display. They would send the check back. American Fireworks would then send us our. But you're, they're sending it to you and you would keep track of making sure well, those, fireworks send it in. they'll send it to the township. So I'm assuming it would go to person. I would want to make sure we have an invoice of some type to American Fireworks from you guys that we can follow up on paying you those 400 bucks. Okay. Instead of us just trying to beat them down. And okay. Well, I think we need to have somebody accountable too. So the it's on American. It's on the fireworks company. Yeah, I can't say American. Yeah, yeah, it's on the fireworks company right. to collect that fee if they want to. If they choose not to, they're still going to have to pay us. Right. So I think right. That's just for making the lots of fireworks that. will cost them. They said that's how everybody does it. All over it. Just I, I think however you do it, I don't think you should single out one business. I think you need right. To I forget American Fireworks. I just that's the name of the yeah. yeah. Any so if we do events or anybody who does them, it's going to pay a big township wise. Um, <clears throat> can you put a we put kind of thing together from the fire department? Yeah. That it needs to be a bill from you to the to the fireworks. Okay. Because it's from your yeah, I'll, I'll come up. It's your prep, right? Is what we're being charged. Well, for. it would just be on their fee sheet. I know so. what we're charging for is your prep and your guys. Yes. Right? We'll send so. something. Okay. We'll have a resolution saying the township has approved four hundred dollars per event okay. for fireworks. If you can put a, a, an invoice together and then leave a blank spot for the vendor, then the person can send that out anytime we have it. But I just want you to make sure it's coming from the fire department and bill and. I don't care if the people don't pay them. I'm still building the fireworks company. They still write us. Right. So, okay. And the fireworks company contacts you prior to get the petition. Yeah. So that's, that would be the trigger to send anytime the fireworks company calls to do any event. Yep. It would trigger. Yep. Again, we're not, if, if Bill sets off fireworks, I'm not going to charge him. It's the planned event sure. where they have to have a fire truck and personnel there. And that's why he's. Uh, well, I try to, but usually two, <coughs> usually two for five hours. So, well, I, I agree. I mean, you, you need to charge. Yeah, and it, I, I've already talked to uh, Joe. And <coughs> he's not. He doesn't have a problem. Just make sure you know, it initiates from from you guys. I don't want to be chasing American. Yeah. 
whoever, firework company down and right. for a fee. Right. It's a charge. You can't do these fireworks here in Griffin unless you meet the file with the fire department and pay four hundred bucks. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks. Is someone in your need to make a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the fee schedule for the firework detail program at four hundred dollars per event. Second. And I'm gonna just sort of a notice. I run a business there, so I'm abstaining. Okay. Okay. All those in favor, Mike. Sam. Sue. Yes. Nick. Yes. Motion passed. This is for the whole. The whole township. It is. It is. It just happens to be that the only shows going on in the township happen there. Right. 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 Oh, yeah, I understand. You got to do it. Right. So. Um, I, what would that be called, Craig? In, I would say fire, firework detail fee structure. Yeah, it's a special detail for that. <laughs> just like, I mean, the cops, whenever you have to work stuff, we charge a fee. We have to. Special details. Yeah, they pay the officer directly, though. So we have yeah. the invoice. They pay for the user, though, don't they? They do. Okay. We voted, didn't we? Yes. Okay. Okay, I'm good. Okay, the next thing I need board approval for is the upstairs bedrooms of the fire department. They never put any doors on. That was not a mistake made um, in the project. That was something that was always not there. Uh, the idea was to put curtains on the bedroom doors. And we, we as the fire department have decided we'd like to have doors on the bedroom so that would be an additional charge. Um, the price, as you see, and if you want to look over here, so the official invoice for that. Um, there's a, and a lot of the money set out there that we've already put into the project that John and I have discussed would come out of that a lot of amount um, that would be paid back to the fire department at the end of the project. Um, so we, we do choose to go ahead and put I'll the make that motion for discussion. I'll second it. That's $3,212 per door. You got yeah, I, I talked to Scott and I talked to another carpenter and they thought that was fair. Fair? Well, they, so, well, so hold on. They have to put walls up. There's additional walls to be put in. Um, they have to repaint everything, put the doors up, plus the door and the door hardware. So it is not just a door. Well, if we're building this for the next 50 years, I don't think it hurts. I, Mike, I, I agree with you. It seems ridiculous, right? But I, I did, I did look at it. And that was all of that. Okay. And this is coming out of the fire department budget. Well, it would come out of the additional money. This is the reserve money that we have put out there. Right, but that was his money. So <laughs> essentially, the fire department is paying. Yes, because whatever's left out of that carryover fund. So I had to put, just as a discussion, I had to put $375,000 in, um, and then I just would get shorted that when the end of the project comes back, assuming that we don't need to use that, which I don't think we will. But there will be additional things here and there that I might dip into that money for, because like I was saying, we're going to find 10 things that we wanted to do different right, as the project goes along. Okay, I got a motion by Sue, second by Nick. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion by Mr. Yes. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Hey, when are we going to have a discussion on that uh, piece by the gazebo? When will we move towards that? Well, uh, I don't know. <laughs> there hasn't been anything to come back to, <laughs> and I was kind of told the business manager will then take over that. When they're put in place, I don't know if that's true. Don't you want to move over with the next leader? Well, I had a conversation with Bobby Hauser last about 20 minutes. He said he's in the process, he's got three different options, and he's in the process of writing them up and submitting them to us for the board to take a look at. Bob also is going on vacation for a month. So. I know he's in Europe, I think. Okay. 
Okay. So it's, 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 it's there. It's also, I don't know where that lands as far as the parks. Is that parks need to? Well, it's still a little bit of town green. So. Uh, I agree, but, you know, the flag and stuff, that was all parks. So right. I don't know who, who wants that. So I don't know. Who wants to fix the problem? Who wants to have a decision on the finalized? Like what? What's going to happen with the gazebo compared to well, I mean, that? I mean, I mean the one thing I heard they want to cut some of the decking down. I mean, I'm not a big fan. I'm saying you need to go and retain it all. You should have been put in the plans in the first place. I mean, I don't know what architect or who screwed it up. I mean, do they think it's just going to go away? I mean, I I told you my kind was this way from the beginning, and they have. I've heard it from Kent State, and now they're doing exactly what they do with other people. So, I mean, I know there's issues, but, you know, man, gosh darn it, they need to come and address us. Mm -hmm. I mean, number one, I, I think it needs to come out of your budget because it's your fire station. This is just one trustee telling you. You know, yeah, we can just spend that much money on doors, and, and we can't come up with your estimate of what, $20,000 for your training wall there? I'm not for that. I mean, the easiest way for you guys was to cut off part of the gazebo, the deck of the gazebo that we put on for free. This is all just coming from me, so. I just want us to get a resolution. So is I- that, that slab that they got sitting up there? Did we in that down there? So I need to pay for the gazebo? <coughs> no, I just you need to pay for the retaining wall. I mean, it's your project. I mean, we've already set aside money in the m and fund, extra stuff. I mean, you know, we, we bought a, a table. I'm not every twelve thousand dollar table. I mean, how much is the best we want that you're building? It was all approved through your I guess. know, but I mean, I think there's important thing and important things. I'm mean, keeping the history of the township alive, and people having weddings there to me is important. You know, I mean, yeah. I don't want some kid falling over. I mean, that's just my opinion. I really think it's your project. You kind of have to pay it. I mean, we find money for all these other things, so. But I'm ready to talk about it whenever you are, so let's get, when are they going to move those stones and stuff out of there? Are you going to look at that for the next two months? I don't know. Gosh, darn it. Again, I would say we need a discussion. Yeah. Well, I just need to, uh, Mike. Um, I agree we need a discussion. Let's get to this. Let's get going. I mean, I'll kind of yell at the meeting, but it seems when I yell at them, they're not even good anyhow. These guys are just moving at their own pace. Yeah, we want to move on to Adam. Yeah. <coughs> we have no business in that. Okay, Mike, is coming. Yeah, thank you. Hey, you doing, Good. So uh, Town Center Master Plan, we're completing a TIF with Pride One to help develop uh, the Town Center Master Plan. Also, uh, Woolen Engineering is developing a conceptual drawing for sidewalk and lighting areas as requested by the Zoning Commission. In order for this to proceed uh, as the Zoning Commission has requested, uh, I would need a, a trustee motion for uh, State Route 43 and Talmadge Streetscape Master Plan proposal to go forward. And once again, this is only a conceptual drawing to let the Zoning Commission know where the areas where sidewalks can go and, and where lighting can go. It's not a, a final say on, the, on, on those locations until, you know, obviously goes through zoning and then you guys as well. Can I ask one question? When we looked at that initial rendering they had, mm -hmm. I mean, I know there's, I don't want to screw any business over. Now there's, you know, there's talk that there's going to be a new restaurant on that corner, wouldn't that take up some of his property? I don't think he needs to lose any property. Where, so these sidewalks <coughs> would only be within the right of way. Uh, and then Mike has to look to see where we can fit in. Some locations we can't fit sidewalks in. Or, you know, even though we want them everywhere, they just they just can't happen because of utilities and uh, right of way distances. But this this would be the plan on showing us where they can go in the future and where they can't go. From this, this point on, um, once you get it in, enabled through Zoning Commission and through the trustees, then you can go out and, and request for proposals from engineering firms to actually do the detailed drawings. This is only a conceptual drawing. Okay, I just don't wanna, it's hard to start a business anywhere. 
Yeah. So we have two things right there, Mike, right? <coughs> so the first the first thing would be just the motion for this. Uh, uh, for Pride 1 TIF. Pride 1 TIF is not on the agenda right now. It's just letting you guys know that the TIF is coming here. We're going to meet with the schools first, and then we come to you guys with the actual So we're going to the streetscape master plan. Yeah, so that TIF is coming. Uh, John, you've seen it uh, yeah. come back and forth. We just need a, a school's blessing before it comes to you guys. What is the estimated cost on this moment engineering for the conceptual drive? Um, you should have the attachment. Um, $4,000. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is this going to be similar to the conceptual drawing that we had done with when we looked at the State Route 43 and 18 projects no. we did the safety study and putting in the sidewalks and all that through there. No, this is different. So this is the zoning commission. Yeah, I remember we did the sidewalks as part of that. I had the streetscape, but we had a whole streetscape plan. That's, that's what I was sort of worried about. That was a that was a streetscape with roundabout. And what has happened here is the zoning commission has requested sidewalks and lighting throughout the whole town center. So we're looking at locations where uh where those could go. I know it expanded and they, they wanted to push the sidewalks and the lighting all the way down State Route 43 in the Kent, but that would take it into the HC district as well as the IC district. And going forward, we said with that, we'd like to make resolution changes to the code to let developers do those portions. The town center is what we're going to concentrate on now and then development as it comes, we would Enforce that with development. Oh, it would be interesting to see it because, like, like any of those businesses, the drive through or that the old bed barn or whatever it was, pretty mm -hmm. much. And yeah, there's just no parking. No, how much room is there for sidewalks? You know what I mean? There's hardly any parking at the red barn area. Well, that's that's what we're trying to create is is find out where we can put them, where the locations go, where the lights will fit. Not everywhere is it going to happen. Oh, I think it, it would be great if we could figure out how to do it. Mm -hmm. and Hey, Mike Ladd, can, I don't know, it's, it's a state road with a roundabout and all that. Can the state just come in one day and say we're putting a roundabout here? <coughs> this is what we're doing. Who cares if Ripley wants or not? Is that an option? I mean, it'd have to be okayed by the county engineer. So the state won't do it unless the county's on board. And and with, you know, Larry Jenkins taking over, that's a, that's a potential. Okay, I'm just curious. We get all this, the state just came in and said we're doing a roundabout here. Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, Mickey was not in favor of this, and Nick, you were in that meeting as well, and, and I think Larry is open to hear this again. Um, I mean, is that something that we should be discussing? Not that I'm saying I'm 100% supportive of the roundabout, but I know by doing that, it opened up a lot of funding opportunities. It does. Are those funding opportunities still there? It's still should we be pulling out that whole study that we spent so much money on and having that rediscussion with we will. the engineer? We will. So I think that's part of it. I mean, Mike willing to take that into, into account as well as leaving that specific area. But this is all the other, you know, areas going from um, throughout the town center, down the streets, the, the lighting district that you talked about going all LED. What type of lighting is it going to look like? Who's going to take care of it? That's what we're doing at the zoning commission level right now. Um, and then they request this plan, which obviously you guys need to approve any money expenditure, but they wanted to get started on the plan and start looking at it conceptually, go from there to a request for proposal and looking at an all encompassing engineering slash uh, AMS funded project. So we would be looking at the next firm, which is Michael and said it's too big for his firm to look at. So we would go for a request for proposal. Um, at that point in time, we'd have the zoning commission, um, you know, do their due diligence and everybody have their scoring sheets uh, for a firm to pick out a firm. That way it's a fair basis. Um, but at that point, it, we'd need the county on board if we're going forward with the State Route 43 streetscape with the lighting. There was two options on the board, if I can remember. One was a roundabout, one was the, the whole lighting um, and signalization with preemption 
um, you know, room for the fire department to get out and, and fire actuated signal, which was preempted. That one included like a strip with, with landscaping. Uh, so there's a couple different options, but we'll, we'll have to have those meetings as we go forward with, with the county. This particular plan takes care of the sidewalks going all the way down past the police station um, over to the new Redwood area and vice versa going to the subdivisions, um, Chapman Farms, things like that on the other side. And that is well going past Brimfield Breda when it creates a walking atmosphere all the way to the school back and forth. Throughout and that's the all that we made out of the potential TIF dollars. For well, if we're going to do the Safe Walk to Schools, we're going to do AMS just for the sidewalks alone. I think we could get funding on that portion. You're going to need a, a bigger firm. This is just conceptual drawings to get you to that point. Um, and once it's tweaked through Zoning Commission and back to this board and then approved and then request for proposals go out, then we can start looking for funding along with a firm. So you need this one approved today to get that started? Just the start. Mm -hmm. I would like to make a motion that we accept the recommendation of the economic, economic director to allocate $4,000 to pay for a conceptual master plan of um, the engineering plans for our landscape for the town center master plan. I'll second. Any discussion? Do you think we need? There's a certain older guy that keeps driving his uh, electric car down the street. Yeah. It's not safe. Yeah, I'd like to see the sidewalk design. I just wanted to see how it ties in with that other study. A lot of money into that. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. okay, all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. <coughs> So I will need uh, another a motion from the trustees for Clyde Pearson to be appointed to Zoning Commission at alternate pending uh, background approval. So moved. Uh, discussion. How, how many applications did you have for that position? We had uh, posted the position for three weeks. And <coughs> we have one application. Okay. Where do we post the position at? Online, on our website. Just on the website. Mm -hmm. We didn't advertise that on Facebook. <coughs> Not to my knowledge. We had two people pull applications, like to bring them back, they never brought them back. <coughs> all right, all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. <coughs> I will. Yeah, you will be. So we're currently working on updating the zoning resolution and we'll be printing out new books for both the Board of Zoning Appeals and the Zoning Commission. Those will be bound. Uh, we're going to do this annually. Any kind of changes that come in, we're going to reprint those books out, have the hard copy as well as everything put back on uh, the new website. And then Chase Bank has started work uh, next to the Meyer gas station. And um, you all should have a, a, full, a full report on here. There's there's 33 items. We're quite busy, but I don't want to take up everybody's time this morning. So if there's any questions, let me know. Have you uh, had any new inquiries in the development of parking down the street there? My wife was in Marshall, and she's been going to the Saturday. So it was hiking up and down the lane. There's like eight, eight empty storefronts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd anticipate those filling in. I mean, we have uh, another developer that I'm meeting with out of Columbus this Friday, um, and they're interested in the space across the street and the land across the street from all these. So on that side, so I think you'll see some movement on that as well. <coughs> no, so I I went up there. Um, Kind of, kind of strange. You know, the cups are still there, the machines are still there. They they moved the chairs out and pulled the signs off and turned the lights off. So it was, nobody notified us of anything. But mm. yeah. Mike, I see on here zoning commission meeting is June eighth and zoning appeals meeting is June twenty first. But it also says the board voted to eliminate future YouTube meetings. Yes. Um, 
what I see it says to promote attending, but I have Correct. concerns about that from public access to information, especially those that can't attend the meetings. Um, we, we were providing a service, now we're blacking that out. So we had a letter, you know, since uh, COVID has ended, we, we asked Chad Murdoch for his interpretation because there is concern with the, the number one concern with the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, and, you know, they didn't, uh, Chad didn't like that we were, um, it's a quasi-judicial board. So he didn't feel that those should be YouTubed. Uh, we don't YouTube court appearances. So he, you know, his rationale was that that wasn't good. Also with the Zoning Commission, he suggested public, big public hearings. Um, but then again, I said, well, that's not up to me. He says, no, that's entirely up to the boards and specific to Zoning Commission and Board of Zoning Appeals, whether or not they want to be videos. So we gave that letter out to the board and then they actually did a vote. Um, Bill, you were present tonight. But these are public hearings, so the public can just come and live stream them. They can come into the meeting, yes. And they can live stream and put them up. They can. I just, I just feel as though it, it takes us back. You know what I mean? We've been trying to be as open as we can with government. I see us now where, you know, not providing this access. There's lots of residents that may not be able to attend a meeting for whatever reason it is. Now they can't do this. Yeah, I, that has nothing to do with me. That's a board decision. So the boards are specific to their own roles. I just, yeah, I just saw it on here. Um, if next time, if you could keep us posted on stuff like that, that's a pretty sure. major change. Sure, and, and I let Sue know the, the vote was happening. Okay, so yeah, this is the first I heard about it. My thing says, they say COVID is over, and the Zoom meetings were during COVID, and then in June, I think last year, then the state provides COVID, they said that that's no longer necessary. Well, it was no longer legal to vote over Zoom. Not that it wasn't necessary. A lot of political entities continue to live stream. They were live streaming prior to COVID also. It's just you can't, what the state said in June is you cannot vote virtually. You have to be in person to vote. That means you can't stream. Okay. Well, I was just wondering how many, how many <coughs> townships and cities actually televise all their meetings on YouTube. I mean, I. I mean, are we the only one doing it? I've, you know, I've talked to other people that they didn't even touch it. So I'm not, I'm just saying, it sure, sure would be interesting to know. Well, I think that we should really listen to what our boards say because they have our residents first in mind. And these are evening meetings at 7 o'clock, so most people would be able to come here in person if they wanted to discuss anything. Okay, well, that's... Anything else? Anything else? Okay. Do we need a motion to change protocol? No, but we don't have to do it. So. Okay. okay. It'd be up to the decision of this board. Yeah. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks, Mike. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, the people looking at that property, is like a top call for something? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. They reached out to me. They set up a meeting for this Friday. They were going to come up. We're going to we're going to have a Zoom meeting, and then it's across the homes. Correct. That's five acres, isn't it? Is there's it there's several houses? there's several properties. The only one there's one that Dehoff has already purchased and knocked down the house. The rest so there, this would be the remaining those, properties in there. Across all those properties. Oh, mm -hmm. I believe so. And what would you say, Chris? Whited, whited cows. Could be, could be. I'll, I'll, I'll know more. I'm looking at it. I think it's way across the street. I'll know more. So is there an option on the property or they just look at it? They want to discuss the options. That's right. What about the next two goals? Have you heard anything there yet? No. No, we haven't. But we have a meeting. Uh, Woolen is actually setting up a meeting with uh, Sutton Crossings to look at gaining access in um, the apartment complex might. Um, give us an easement. You heard anything about the property directly west of the bank on 18? West of the bank. Which bank? Uh, I don't know. It changed the Premier Bank? Whatever the, whatever the current name is. Premier? Used, used to be hometown number two. Premier. Yeah. There's the property. There's houses up on the hill. Yes. 
that's so we're talking about from the, from there all the way past to all these. That's what we're looking at discussing. We're looking at discussing this on Friday. Okay, when you have meeting like business trying to go in right there. Yeah, there was there was a talk of of one specific business. Uh, there's been a lot of um, requests for zoning on those, which is like there's these national companies that come in and they do the research and try to give us homework <laughs> without doing their stuff. But uh, yeah, there's been a lot of interest on that. Yeah. <laughs> went, went, one, went past one last night in uh, East Lake and it was packed. It was later in the evening, it just jammed. Can't even get into it. So we're going back to the little anger. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Dave, your own departments. All righty. I didn't have much of a didn't have much of a chance to get a report together. I was working on a lot of numbers. Uh, just to let you know, we are pouring the foundations of the cemetery today. So we will be buttoning up the last few things. And there's a couple of signs of a show order, but we're putting them up in the next couple of days too. Uh, now I'll just get into what I was crunching all day yesterday. Uh, I need board approval to remove nine trees from the cemetery from uh, Kuntzman and Company for $15,000. What it is is it's the five trees along the roadway in the old Pioneer section. They're all dying off and get, starting to lose a lot of branches and stuff. Plus, there's four trees along behind uh, the edge of the property going toward Conrad's, where we had a pine tree already break off a couple of years ago, and the trees there are starting to uh, really look. There was one crack in the other day. Where's Conrad's? You have an estimate on those pine trees. Oh, Conroy's. Yeah, I always call them Conrad. Do you have an estimate on those pine trees right behind the building is how tall they are? No, he, we didn't get those it. Those are easily 60 foot. Uh, he, this whole process is going to take a crane and everything in there. Well, one, to protect the headstones, to, you know, and, and move things around from the building. Are you so, planning on trees when they die? No. Yeah. No, we're going to stump grind and everything. We're going to clean, just clean the section out. It, having trees in a cemetery is a pain. I mean, I hate to say that because the roots start lifting up headstones and people don't take care of their bushes. They disappear to headstones. I mean, so, but now this is something that the committee, the cemetery committee was talking about, and I just got the numbers from it. So I just want to bring it to the board. I'm going to make a motion that we approve the tree removal, nine trees from the cemetery, and now we receive $15,000 by Goose and Company. Second. I'll second that. Any discussion? Well, I can say from a cemetery perspective, we do not want to get into the cost of replacing those headstones, which are irreplaceable in there. If you lose one of those trees, it's going to take out 30 of them yeah. in the Pine Cemetery. Well, there is a lot more trees that would need, but this is the main, since these were breaking off and toward the building and stuff, so. Okay, all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Sorry about this. I got a whole mess of stuff for you guys today. <laughs> uh, I'm looking for board approval for the purchase of a new Western Star 47X dump truck from a TSI for a total of $110,082. It's just a truck and chassis, which is uh, it's an improvement of the truck. We're moving up from International to Western Star. Everybody's starting to go to them because they're more they're state and everybody calls them more reliable so and plus it's uh just better to give guys a little more room in the cab we got our taller guys that's what everybody's getting them for is the bigger guys to give them more leg room more comfort and that stuff so i'll second for discussion I did talk to Dave about this extensively yesterday. And uh, Dave, are we replacing the truck or is this, are we going to have a new storage truck? Well, we're, we'll be replacing dump truck 27. Okay. It's a 2001. Okay. So that the truck will actually stay there okay. because we need a spare. Okay. 
Okay. I mean, right now, I mean, I don't have a spare truck for nothing. So where are you going to put that? 24, we'll have, we'll have to find a place to park. It probably will not. Actually, it, it probably will be outside somewhere. Okay. Now, Dave, what, if I just remember correctly, what was the amount that we put out there for you to buy at the conference? 200,000. So this is taking that. That's what we were right. going to buy at the conference. Okay. And plus my other dump truck that we just purchased a couple years ago, it's, it's off the books now, too. It's been paid for. So it would be just like a rotating, say, the loan thing. Yeah, just to John, um, this is just going to be an annual payment we're going to do like we do with the other trucks. Okay, it's going to replace the one that we just paid off too. So. Okay, so we're just replacing that payment. Yeah, we're just, cycling. yeah, we're cycling. I mean, it, the last truck was supposed to be a 2021, but it took 16 months to build, so it was a 2020. What's the anticipated turnaround on this one? Uh, this one, talking to Western Star, they're figuring about six months for truck chassis uh then you have glen hill which i'll get on the next phase of this uh they're looking at about four so you're looking about january okay i mean it's going to be january february are they uh, at least getting trucks in now because the last time i was out with customer they were still getting trucks missing seats west, and dashes no western star has actually been they're actually real quick i i yeah. talked international they're still 12 months out just truck and chassis uh mac truck i mean we got quotes from them they were well, of course, out of the price range, but also they were uh, they're 12 months out just to truck, you know. So that puts you another four months for the, the bed bill, the salt package. So, right. And then, so you're looking again, we would have been out 16 months. So, okay. trust me, I've been pushing to see if anybody's got any demos out there that they want, but so far, there was not. Everybody's truck's taken. All those in favor, uh, Mike, yes. Sue, yes, Nick, yes. Okay, then on top of that, I'll need a board approval to purchase the dump body snow and ice package from Glen Hill Road Machinery for $99,908.30. I'll second. Does this, John and Dave, does this lock into the price since we're so far out? Like, can they do a price increase change on us? No, once yeah, off, once I sign the paper, say we sign it, that it's locked in at that point. Okay. Any more questions? All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. That's why I shouldn't take vacations and get behind on everything. Uh, all right. Uh, now I need a uh, board's approval for the 2023 chip and seal project for a total of $206,364.25 with an alternate road bed for Oakwood Estates at $189,844.75. I, I, I guess we can wait a minute to discuss it. Okay, so, so the first thing, we just need a board approval. Well, you want to, we need a motion for the for both. Who is the 206? What road or which road? The 206,000 is for Howe Road and Sunnybrook Road. Does that include Edson too? No. Okay. Sunnybrook? Yes. What it is is uh, Howe Road. Just I'll just throw it out there real quick. Howe Road, we're going to do partial depth repairs and stuff and fix the road up, smooth it out in bad spots. Really notice between Mogador and Sunnybrook, it's really coming unravel. Uh, with talking with the engineers, I wanted to, this is one of them roads that's too new to put on OPWC yet because the township did it in 09 and 10. So it's not got old enough yet for I can just redo it again. So this will save the road and fix it, you know, smooth it out, put the chip on it. That way we're not putting so much cracks in on the whole road the whole time. So and this is east of 43. Well, that's away from 43. This will be west of 43, all the way to Talmadge City Line. Because the other side of 43 isn't there. <coughs> no, we just chipped that a few years ago. Very good. All right, so it's for two or so six. One, that'll be the first one. Right. Then we're going to add a three Well, one. unless you want to, well, if you want to break each one down. I think you do this one, because it's called an alternative, so it means we're not tied to it. Yeah, so what, the, reason, the reason is, is uh, I'll just explain it real quick. Oakwood Estates, we were planning on doing a leveling course and then a chip on top, smooth everything, you know, and get the water flowing the right way off the edge of the roads and stuff. 
Well, the price of asphalt's gone a little crazy this year. So that project came in way more than what we were thinking. But talking with uh, Mike Collins and stuff, we'd like to put it on there as an alternative because say somebody all of a sudden looks and says, hey, we're doing Sunnybrook and how that development's right off of Howell Road, we may get a better price. If not, I can let it go to the side and it doesn't, because right at the moment, I think we can't afford it at this price, with, especially with the King Ridge prices coming in. How much was that? 189. 189, $844.75 is what. Mike, if you go to the second page of that um, packet, yes, the his road package, he's got all the prices broke down. And we already approved the 189, right? What's that? No. No, that's over. This no, is an alternate as part of it. No, the, we didn't do anything with King Ridge. No, I actually just got the number to King Ridge last night, so we're going to hold off that for the next trustee. <clears throat> So we're going to do how in, in Sunnybrook. Sunnybrook, unless it's too expensive, then we're going to go to Oakwood Estates. No, we're, we're going to go ahead and do how in Sunnybrook, yeah. alternative mm -hmm. Oakwood Estates. So it means, in other words, we're guaranteed how in Sunnybrook. Sunnybrook. Yes. Oakwood is a maybe depending on prices. Yeah, that's, that's why that's we want the alternative board board so they can fit it as one package. Right. As an alternative. Okay, I think we have to make the motion. Yeah, I'll make that motion. I'll second Dave, just a quick question, because I got a couple of this. Uh, I think a couple of us have. How do we decide what roads we're going to do? Is there like a priority list? Where does that priority list come from? Is there a scoring structure we use? Oh, uh, how do we how do we make a decision what roads we're going to pay? Well, we, we go through and look at what the roads look like, and plus I also bring the engineers. They'll look at some of them that I bring up. Is actually I had a list of about seven roads for the chip and seal side. Some of them we decided we could let them go another year or two and that. And like this, this is one of them, like how Road, we're trying to save how Road where we don't lose it. And then all of a sudden now we're in, you hate to say it. Right. But we come, we, I go out and I look at everything, see what we're spending our time on, fixing, patching, you know, the most time spent somewhere, this and that. Do you have like a scoring list that you've done of that? Or I don't go up and down the scoring list. I, I look at the road, what's worse on it. I mean, like we have roads, like the whole thing with King Ridge and Mike Portage Commons. Yeah, Portage Commons is the one you call. He's like, why are we doing a wood over Portage Commons? I don't understand why you're making this decision. Well, because. And I, I want to walk in there, guys. I'm going to have more 45 minutes of walking the whole summer. That's what he said. And he called after you to walk with you. He's like, I'm not getting anywhere. I don't understand why we're making the decision. So, yeah, well, see. Can I explain it all? It says it's our most here presents. He said he's one of the worst with the roads. And I mean, this guy is a nice guy. He's a great guy. He really takes care of his property. And, uh, so it's another I mean, the road on top of the track. That's why I'm all here. Well, that's what I was just trying to figure out. Do, the, do we do some type of scoring list just so, you know? Well, I can see us with, like, you know, for example, how we're doing it now, so we don't pay double or triple the price right. down the road makes sense to me. I was just trying to figure out how we got there. Well, unlike the developments, like I explained to the gentleman that you guys are talking about, too. I mean, two or three different emails. Uh, King Ridge, we're losing service. We're having road. We have actually, if you go up there, the one curve is actually dropping on the roadway. So actually, I got to fill in a ditch pipe it and bring it back up where we can keep the road. Right now it's pitching where it's sending vehicles down around the corner if you go too quick. Okay. So there, there's, we compare them. The county did look at both both developments because that was both on my list of which one, you know. So my thought was King Ridge and the county even back King Ridge. Plus there's that uh, old thing we did with GPD five, six years ago. They went through naming off the allotments, which were in, Bad shape then, you know, kind of order and stuff. But it, it does come down a lot to what where we're spending a lot of our time, it's where we look at what you know worst of the case scenarios. Okay. So I mean, I was, you know, you're welcome to go off, but no matter what I tell you, you won't accept what I tell you. Right. No, I was just looking more for clarification, just for myself too. Just on how I, I value your opinion, Dave. I was right. just trying to understand the logic. Behind yeah, we things. we kick. I kick it around with the county engineers too. So it's, I mean, they even agree with me on this one. Like, 
I mean, they're real close. Don't get me wrong. Both roads, I mean, trust me, I wish I had a million dollars to go out and pave all the dang roads. But some, some of you got to take, you know, we had pieces up there that are sliding. There's major dips. I mean, it's, we've dumped a lot of asphalt in these dips. So we're, we're going to try to get things fixed that way. Okay. No, I appreciate that. Just helps me understand. That was, oh. I do understand where they're coming from. Been over 20 years. Well, and King Ridge could say the same thing. I know. And so, yeah, I mean, you hate to say marsh landings because the township built all these allotments about the same time. That's the problem. Right. And, so. and I, and I know you're, you're just taking the right road. I mean, you're taking the right, you know, the road's better than anybody. So, you're allowed. We try. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, motion on the floor. For the whole of state. Well, oh no, it's a whole 2023 chip. Oh, we didn't do that. Great. Chip and seal. Um, correct. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, now these are the easier ones. Uh, I need board approval for the advertisement dates of June 9th and June 16th uh, for the chipping program and bid opening date June 28th at 7 45 a.m. before our trustee meeting, next trustee meeting. Wait, am I right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Well, it'll probably be two trustees. You're going to advertise them on two different yeah. times. Right. right. It'll be the, yeah, it'll be the 28th trustee. Sorry, 745 a.m. Mike, make a motion. Yes, sir. Sue seconded. I seconded. Okay, all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. And I'll make a motion for the Porter County Engineer to represent the Porter State. Second. All those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. All right. Well, I'd like to thank the board for all that. Sorry about all this at one time. Uh, probably at the next trustee meeting, like I said, I just got this information last night because what's been happening with a lot of paving projects is they've been going over the 10% allowance. So the county re redid our numbers for King Ridge and stuff. So I still got to go over with some of this with Mike Collins. But as of right now, it's looking like that project's going to be pushing over four hundred fifty thousand to do that a lot. So, I, like I said, I still got to go over some of these numbers, what we're keeping, what we're not. But we did budget it back to do the project at that point because it's a big, it is a big project. So, plus, like I said, we got to fix. 100 foot section of road and dipping real bad up sliding away plus put some pipe in that kind of stuff so i should have all that hopefully by the next trustee meeting. just an fyi it's a coming <laughs> so other than that that's all i got okay. Um, I have a short informational report for you guys. Um, we've been hard at work at all of our summer programs, so I don't really have a lot to report. But um, the first one is Messner Acres update. Um, every year we walk with Shane from the Western Reserve Land Conservancy. He does a property walk and just assesses the property. He's very happy with the progress that we're making. He's so happy to see the barn down, as am I. So um, he's excited to see continued progress there. So I was happy to do that with him. And then, um, of course, he said the rest of the property looked great, too. And then past programs. Uh, How many tires did you get out there? Oh, my gosh. I think 150 plus. Yeah, I, I knew there were about 100, um, but there was an outbuilding further back on the property. And when Trey took the roof off of it, that it was an outbuilding that had collapsed. When he lifted the roof up, there were 50 really plus additional. Hours, yes, right? they're all gone. So it's great. It looks like a whole new, whole new park. Um, past programs, last Thursday we had our McGuire Park preview hike. Um, we had about 10 people in attendance, so thank you, Mike and Joe, for coming. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And we got a lot of feedback from people, too. We did some surveys, so um, we have feedback on what people want to see. She was, yes. No, thank you. We only got you a little lost. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, you're talking about possibly doing one in the fall. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I hiked it in the fall last year and it was beautiful. So 
Yeah. That's a beautiful learning. Yeah. You know, we look at the Cassie and Cameron Town. I mean, that's beautiful. Yeah, lots, lots of excitement from the community and lots of support, too. So, I did talk to the Boy Scouts at the memorial, and they would like to possibly take their scouts hiking back there. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, it would be nice to get them involved in it and stuff. Mm -hmm. I definitely see that as a future scout park it's very it's a lot more secluded than our other parks so it'd be a great place for camping well, they, they, and fishing yeah and then um, our next upcoming programs this friday we have the portage park summer celebration at Ravenna City Park. Um, we're excited about that. That's our first um, group event with the different uh, park agencies throughout Portage County. So happy that that is happening. And then of course on Saturday the 17th, we have Touch a Truck from 11 to two. That's all I have. That's Okay, because I talked to Mike Wolman and he sent us some information. He's got all that. He's got everything put together. So I think, I think if we all as a board decided to go ahead with this, we need to get, get this knitted out. Well, I guess we didn't talk about the draw. Maybe I didn't make a question of that, but the. I go over. You got this stuff, right? Yeah, I do. But we don't have to do the gazebo. You can choose between. They're available to do, like, you read in that, like, land. As far as the parking lot for, yeah. I mean, it was approved by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Mm -hmm. The, the, the yeah. question came up just from the soccer board that they thought that the pavilion wasn't coming, but then the pavilion was discussed pretty in depth at the zoning board about ADA access to the pavilion and all that. So the pavilion's on the drawing. So now they're questioning is the pavilion coming? Is the pavilion not coming? That's up to you guys. I mean, you the board choose off of that drum, right? Correct. One or the other. Yeah, you, you could phase. You could phase it. Mm -hmm. Well, he sent sent some other drawings out, so I and I haven't seen any of that stuff yet. I just I just saw him. I think this okay. morning. So I'm gonna I'll follow it to you too. Um, I was up there Saturday. To stop. Saturday. To stop by. I could not believe the amount of cars. I mean. If uh, that if the guy who you know who was the, the plant, whoever was running that, if they ever stop them from parking there, it's going to be a mess. Well, I think we should clarify though too that that's not all soccer. It's always been a mess like that because that's all baseball parents that's park there. there. Yeah, because they, they, they park at the school and they park there because they run four games at a time out back there. And, and soccer parents are picking up a small percentage of that. I mean, you well, I saw they had tents up on their property. Up on. Uh, oh, did they? That was yes. that was the umpires. That I I happened to go to that. Yeah, the umpires. Yeah. Baseball up. takes up. I mean, they just they set up the for the umpires to go through wow. walls. <laughs> yeah, so a lot of that is from from baseball over there. Well, I said something. I could not, I could not believe it. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's a hot spot in the summertime between baseball and soccer over there, but. Um, it's always been like that with baseball. They just they park there first because baseball has a, a an agreement with the school, but nobody wants to park at the school because it's an easier walk from that parking lot. So everybody parks in that parking lot first. <laughs> Where does park? So oftentimes we end up parking over at the plaza lot and walking over, or we park on the we, we back up that side road there, or work our spots. It's just you do the drive around. You get there half an hour early, you drive around. So well, we got to think about our other parking lot over there. We're going to start parking in the library parking lot. And that's going to be. Oh, they were close. Well, they were there too. Yeah. <laughs> no, not every weekend is that crazy. It's just if they have a big tournament going like that, that's where it gets. Baseball just brings in so many kids. Um, in fact, we've had issues with baseball when they have big tournaments because they need a place to warm up. And then we'll go to play our soccer matches and they'll be warming up on the soccer field. So then we got to chase the baseball players off. So Cassie, what I think you probably need to do is figure out exactly how we gotta do this. Like my goal one will help you. Yeah. And then this, you know, and I'll try to send do you have a happy with us? I mean I think they yeah, I do. Do you 
Would you send them to the rest of the board and make sure they all, because there's new ones that came from my polling, just the, the part that just so everyone can see it, so maybe the next meeting you can vote on it and get it advertised? Yep. And I did talk, just to you guys, I was talking to Dave and I was talking to Mike Bowen. I mean, we could save money by putting gravel on it, but like Mike Bowen and Dave both agreed, if we can afford it, because remember this money is out of the, what, the AARP or whatever it is. Martin Cummings. So I think this is one thing, remember, I think we just need to do it right and get it asphalted to be done with it. I'd be more worried if you had stone. You hate to say people spend an hour for an hour on the soccer fields and stuff. Well, that's one of the, that's the other concern that was brought up. <coughs> when they did the project at the high school, they actually lost the field because when they were doing the groundwork, they were dumping the dirt up, right, to one of the fields that the kids play on. And then when they pulled it all out afterwards, it left nothing but a bunch of rocks so they can't play there anymore because they're still digging rocks out of that. So I think we just have to be careful if they're going to dig. Where, that they just need to haul out instead of staging it, right? They yeah, they, it. that's a project like that. They should dig and take off site. Right. I mean, but right. I think we almost need to stipulate that in our bid packet so that we don't end up destroying this field of much rocks. Mike, Lyon, what do you think the traffic congestion is going to be on the cul de sac road that's there where the project is built? I mean, there's going to be congestion, but you're going to have another entrance going off to the street by Wendy's. You know? So that was a park test. Right? It was a 103. So is that going to be a shortcut, you think, from? There's going to be a main entrance on both sides. No, I know, but do you think people from Chapel Farms and all that are going to start using that as a shortcut to cut through? Or is that going to be? I, to I think you'd still end up with the same white situation. You still got to stop. You know, I mean, actually, I would think it'd be easier to go straight out to Kelsey. Because yes. going around and trying to right, get out, right. you try to get out by Wendy. Sometimes that's yeah. backed up past Wendy. You know, so. And then getting a left will be impossible. And then keep there. keep in mind in the zoning, you're going to at least need fifty percent hard surface. So even if you're going to gravel, fifty percent would have to be paved anyway. Yeah, I, I think you'd be better off just paving it being done with it. That whole parking lot. What mm -hmm. you're going to put in it? It's less maintenance. You ain't got to worry about keep back dragging stone, that kind of stuff. And it's uh, it's too bad. You couldn't afford to buy a property across the street, put it in the public park, and it's just going to be an issue. It's just going to keep getting busier now, man. It's just. Didn't you own that at one point? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we didn't have a source time for it. We couldn't avoid it. I don't know. It's too bad. We're going to keep Okay. I got a bit iron. You guys can uh, did you make the motion? No, we're not doing a bit pack checks. So we don't have yeah. What's the motion for? To get a bid package started for the parking lot. We don't need a motion to build a bid package. We're requesting one more time, I guess. Yeah, I'm just going to make a motion. I'll just make a motion. Go ahead and pass the talk to my wall. I'm not putting a bid package together. Well, I had it out here too that we were proceeding with the gazebo as well, and that just so okay. clarifies any of that. All right, can I get a second? I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor, Mike, yes. Sue, yes, Nick, yes. Motion passed. Just a quick question, Cassie. Is there any update on the flag? Because I know there are some people are asking on Memorial Day about flags. Yeah. Um, so I did get a quote from a flag repair company. Um, they did come out and say that they could repair it. Um, don't have that offhand. I believe it was around fifteen hundred dollars. So that is an option to do. Wow. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Do you have? Do you know who it was? McConkie Flag Repair out of I think their Cleveland area. Yeah, and they came out and took a look at it. Should you go ahead and make the motion? Um, I don't have an official, in, she gave me an estimate and I asked her to send me an invoice and she hasn't sent me one. I'm assuming. I was listening to the Ohio Journal where they, where they have the state house people talk and come to find out that if you order an American flag, it has to be made in America. So I just wanted to. Let you know that you can't be a Chinese substitute. 
Um, I do have those numbers right here. Well, I don't have an official quote from them, but they estimated um, the halyard and snaps installed will be nine hundred and ten dollars. And then the new truck will be approximately $545. So yeah, I asked her to give me an invoice to show you guys and she hasn't gotten back. I'm assuming Memorial Day is their busy season, so. Okay. Yep. We have to do a flag. We have to do a flag. Um, did nothing that needed to be done with the base of the flag or anything? You just need to repair the top? Yep, you said the rest looked good. Kind of guarantees well, that they're going to give us on the top, but it, I know there's been some people out there that maybe not that Craig had put it, but to me, we can be able to fix the top. Yeah. Are they going to give us any kind of. Okay. I would like to see it go back okay. with that. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's do that and just put it on the next, for the next week. Because sure. I'm happy that they could fix it, but I know that the people that Craig talked to said they couldn't. The top, so I just want to make sure they don't guarantee their work. Yeah, it's not, it's not too much for now that breaks again. So, if you can, yeah, give them a, we need a five plus year, whatever guarantee on the, the top of it. Yep. Okay. Your intern starts. She will start um, towards the beginning of the school season. So I had a meeting with Biomed and they said typically they give them about a week or two to start their classes and then transition into the um, internship program. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I just like as you said some updates. Um, first thing, uh, ATT Cellular, um, hopefully we'll start receiving some devices next week. Uh, we should get the final approval sometime this week from FirstNet to make sure that we are qualified, which we're qualified because the majority of our phones are for, for first responders. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to add is I did get it uh, at a call late last night uh, with Verizon. Um, they are going to give us a discount on our early term fees. So originally we were going to owe about $3,200 in early term fees with Verizon. They're taking that down to $1,800. Um, so they're, they're going to honor some of the devices should not have had an ETF because we're uh, on a government contract. So there, there, there's only 10 devices that we replaced recently that we use promotional pricing for. Those are the only ones that we would owe a little bit of ETF on. So that, that cuts a lot of that money out. So that'll we'll take that and apply it to pretty much having more free service with AT&T. Hey, what's the money for this? Embracing AT&T? Yeah, we're switching to AT&T for cellular. Right. Is there, is there anything you can do that would help us? You were telling me the issue they have like a hotspot over there at the wireless park. That's part of this. What I'm going to do is, uh, as part of the AT&T bid, we're replacing what they're called cradle points in the police and fire. So right now, we're our primary internet, which is cable. If that was to go down, we bounce over to cellular, which is through Verizon currently, with these devices called cradle points. Um, Using some of the money that at t is giving us as a, call it a signing bonus, um, I already was planning on replacing those to get us up to 5G and then at t devices since we're trying to reuse a 4G Verizon. Well, I want to take, I'm going to specifically take the one out of the police department because it's in better condition and we'll put that in McGuire Park. So, so that yeah, that, that we're, we're reusing a hotspot for, you know, full-time internet, which isn't what it's designed to do. It should work, but obviously it's not. So whereas a cradle point is meant for 24-7 operation. So it's just we're just shift some devices around. Can you help you with possibly getting a camera down the driveway? Yeah. Do well, it, it, those cameras be wireless? They no, they do have to be wired. Um, so that's why I'm only going to be able to pull it to that first pole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the existing telephone line. And unfortunately, after the first pole, the, the telephone line is going down. So I have nothing to attach to. But I think once I get the camera up, at least that far down the driveway, we'll have a better view of the gate. Okay, um, and I would like to say I'll have that camera done by the end of next week. I mean, weather permitted. Uh, I, don't, I don't see that. It's not supposed to rain until the 10th of June. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So well, I don't foresee any issues with getting that in. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm glad that Verizon, you know, we're going away. Verizon is still trying to 
get, you know, not hold our heat to the fire. Um, so that, that, that process is going well. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure. Um, on the internet, the fiber internet side, unfortunately, there was an error in the contract that, that John signed us. And so it needs to resign. So we're going to get that done, but we're still, you know, still saying installation within 30 days after the contract. So fiber internet. Right. Yep. And then uh, the next thing we have for the website is we have a what they call a, a discovery meeting. So they're going to give us some proposal concepts. Uh, that would be June six. So that was with the uh, our internal web team. We'll get some like conceptual drawings. Who's on your web team? Uh, it is um, Roy Castle. Uh, you and myself. <laughs> Um, I'm trying to think who is it, Dave? Dave, Dave. Yeah, I represents fire. Okay, um, and do I have Warren's on there? Yes, so yeah, I said to okay. the department Good. has them. Yeah. So, and this will just be some conceptual drawings. We gave them some artwork or pictures, um, from the different departments, different things off our website. They're going to look at those and drop some, you know, oh, some ideas. Yeah, yeah. And then, as long as that's the direction that, that we're looking. Um, that'll be what we'll, the next thing will be is we'll create a, a mock-up website. So that'll be in uh, uh, June twentieth. We'll be a little bit. We'll see like a more of a mock-up. So that's. Will we be able to send that out to us? When we get the well, yeah, when we get the mock-up of the website, all of my ideas uh, in the next trustee meeting have that as a printout to hand off and say, hey. Here's, here's what their mock-up looks like. So, let's look up. Wow, that's a, that's a short one for you. I, yes. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, it sounds like there was a deed, and then we everybody else. That's for fiscal office. Um, under cemetery, just real quick, I wanted to say probably thank you to Rochelle putting that event together, I think it went really well. It was well organized, um, it was a nice turnout. So a lot of people know all the work she puts in behind the scenes. There. I appreciate so, that. She was very good with that. Yeah, it was a pretty big turnout. I was a of working for the Pistol Office. 64. 64. And she even somehow got a, got a flyover. I don't know how she made that happen. Yeah, that's crazy. Did you hear the 18th flyover later in the day? Yeah. No, they flew right over us when we were there. No, the F-18, that oh, was the part, they F-18s that were flying around at different events. Did they come down Southfield? I didn't see one. I didn't see one. Yeah, they didn't. That was the part of the parade. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, I was working in my garden, and uh, they were loud. So, yeah, it was pretty good. Did anyone get any pictures of that? Are you playing flying around? I wasn't no, expecting it. <laughs> that was low. That was low. Uh, this was this was awesome, really well. You can see the guys waving in the cockpit. It was perfect timing too. We had just it was, finished. It was just perfect. Oh, very, you did a great job. Appreciate that. Thank you, Dave. Um, I mean, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. I need to approve the twenty-three second half advances from the auditor. So I need a motion for that. Yeah, okay, I won't get that motion done. I'll second for the advances. In favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Um, the next one is a request for the extension of the Maple Crest project. That's the, the TIF that we're doing down there next to um, Hamrick and, and Martin Wheel, that room that's there. They are asking for it to be extended through August of 23. So by us filling out this resolution, that we're going to approve the extension for that. So I just need a motion and then a second. So moved. Uh, okay, all those in favor? Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Motion passed. Actually, if you guys just want to sign that, that would be great. Mm 
cool. Yeah. Okay, this is the next one we're going to talk about. It's the, it's the American Rescue Plan funding. We have to do a different process. We fill out a resolution per the government on how we do this. This is for the GBC design company that did the, for the cemetery acquisition. We are, we're having to donate that property back there. So we had any drawings and stuff that went along with it for 1,032 which were the surveyors three different times, a legal description review and symbol. And then there was a technician that had to insert line work in the base drawings and just provided line work for proper closure, research, and right description for the land. So we didn't get anywhere with pits or where we were dealing with the purchasing that, that land. This was the step that we had to go through to get them to so it was anyone heard anything? I haven't heard anything. I'm on my phone, but I haven't heard anything back. So this is, just, <clears throat> this is just another step in the process. Yeah, it's their fee from the, that they did the, the survey and all that that was all part of. That had to be the description written and reasons why we were taking it and doing all that kind of stuff. That's what they did. So it was for 1,032, and I just need to get it approved through the art of funding. Okay, I was going to make a motion for it. So after this, now it goes to the courts. Yeah, well, it's already it's already been turned in. So might just wait to hear back. I was hoping that we would hear back that they said stop and just sell it to you and we'll be done, so we don't have to get an attorney. Um, but I haven't heard that yet. So okay, all those in favor? Well, actually, it's all those in favor on this side. So and this is the bill. All those in favor, Mike. Yes. Sue. Yes. Nick. Yes. Right. Motion pass. Thank you. Okay. So now we listening. Now we have uh, three examples. One is the appointment of a council employee to for investigation charges and complaints. Just the first one, they're all in the same category. Thank you. This is 531, 20, 23, the trustee of the consent of the Lord will be in an executive session pursuant to all highly advised of the section 121 22G for the purpose of considering the following matters appointments. I'm going to put this in one motion. Yeah, I'm just doing it on three different yeah. sheets, but they're all in the same okay. category. Appointment, and then the other one will be compensation of a public employee or official. And the third one will be investigation of charges or complaints against a public employee, official, licensee, or regulated individual. Unless the public employee, official, licensee, or regulated the request a public hearing. Okay, that's all I need. I had a motion. Mike made that motion. I need a second. Second. I'll second that. Okay. All those in favor? Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. We are adjourning your executive session at 9.50. I need...
Yeah. All right, we need to make a motion on Rochelle. Uh, Nick, do you want to do that since she's PD? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion to uh, appoint a new, what was the official title that we used? Administrative Assistant slash Records Custodian. Custodian, yeah, two for Rochelle Stasel to take effect uh, retroactive to this Sunday. 528 23. Um, she's a non bargaining, non exempt $23 an hour employee. For the job description. Okay, I'll second that. Okay, all those in favor, Mike? Yes. Sue? Yes. Nick? Yes. Okay, motion passed. I think that was the only thing we had. Do we, get a, we have to do exception. That is resignation. We will when she resigns in September. We'll, we'll take scepter of retirement. Right. She'll do. She offer some an official letter to us. Yes. And that was what Chris was talking about. That we had the wrong. Yeah, ten one instead of nine thirty. That's yeah. what was. She is not. <laughs> okay, you want to adjourn? Yeah. I'm gonna make a motion that we adjourn this week. Second. All those in favor, Mike. Yes. To yes. Nick. Yes. We are adjourned at ten thirty eight. Thanks, Joe.